post Thanksgiving. Yeah. I always thought they should add a little kazoo in there somewhere. A little sound bite. A kazoo? Yeah. What's like a zoo? It's a little, uh-uh, uh-uh. little tube with a little piece of paper in there. To... More cowbell. Can you do it with your voice? More cowbell? Yeah, more cowbell. <laughs> okay. Cowbell I'm on board with. All right, well, it is uh, it is November uh, 28th. It is after Thanksgiving. Uh, happy post-Thanksgiving. Hope you guys had a great one. Um, dudes like us, I am Sean. I'm Paul. I am Jeff. And I'm the guest. I'm Larry. <laughs> and welcome back, Larry. This Thank you very much. Glad Larry to be here. was our first guest yeah. ever. Ever. That's right. Uh, I knew it was exciting. a long time ago. I didn't realize you were like, the first guest ever. That's, like, what, that's very cool. Two yeah, that was three years ago. Way before COVID and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that was yeah. three or four years ago. Yeah. And back then, we had no idea what we are doing. And now we really we, we don't sh- have any idea what we're doing. <laughs> we still really don't understand. We've just gotten worse. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. And yes. that's the, the best part of it is that dudes like us will uh, we'll talk about things that dudes like us do. Uh, we sample a few bourbons. We talk about life. We talk a, hopefully a little bit about politics. We try not to talk about it, but sometimes it's a, it's a little frustrating. It. It's inevitable. It, it impacts us. I mean, you know, uh, economy impacts us. Family lifestyles impact us. And just this weird agenda that's being produced in the ether out there that's being imposed on us, whether you we know, like it or not. You know, one good thing. One good thing that I've uh, I've been hearing about reading stories and seeing news stories is the whole DEI movement is beginning to die. Yeah. That the companies, and the reason for that is the Supreme Court ruling over well, the summer. Back up a little bit, Jeff. Apologize for interrupting. Explain to us what the DEI is. Well, DEI is the diversity, equity, and inclusion bullshit, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Basically, we need more... Uh, Black people, we need more gay people, we need more women. It uh, doesn't matter about their qualifications. We just need to check a box. That's how right. I interpret it anyway. Yep. Yeah. In terms of promotions, in terms of hiring, in terms of even even uh, 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 supply, yeah, who you, chain. Who, who you purchase from. Yeah. Like right on Google. You do Google Google search on there, and on the bottom left-hand side, there's a little box. Hey, man, you want some black-owned businesses? Correct. You want right. some, but there's no white. Right. Yeah. So so anyway, there there there's been a, a, a slowdown in these companies and they're actually disbanding those teams, right? And part of the reason is it's cost money to run that. And the Supreme Court ruled over the summer, if you remember the Harvard and Yale case, oh, yeah. right, about uh, affirmative action in their enrollment process. Well they ruled against that and they think the next step is to rule against hiring practices for the same reason it is completely illegal yeah i mean the eeoc is there already right the dei kind of has trumped that and gone around that somehow to allow basically if you're a middle-aged white guy you're not even considered for certain things That's right. even in some of the princes hey this position is for Minority represented, or however, the, whatever they call it, right. intersectionality, whatever the bullshit is. Um, if you don't fit within this group, don't even bother applying, because we have to check the box. Uh, I would, I would just identify as whatever they need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't care. Well, I'm the funny, gay, I'm a gay female. Well, I'm, the funny I'm thing is, is guy. there? If you saw this <laughs> a couple months ago, there was a job the trans. There was yeah, a job go, fair man. out Two in penises. Las Vegas, I think. Women's only job fair for high tech oh, jobs. About that. that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and a bunch was, of men showed and up. It was uh, it was invaded. It was occupied. Yeah, so I mean I saw the video, there there were just as many men there as there were women. And they were so upset. Oh yeah. We were identifying as, as female today. Uh, it made a mockery of it, but it, it made a statement as well. And I thought it was as wonderful. There are I think there's some full circles of shit coming around. Uh, there was finally this trans guy that was playing soccer. Um, was getting some pushback, not from people being shitty to him because he's a guy playing on a woman's soccer team, but because the other teams, the opposing team, simply said, "Yeah, we're not playing." Right. We're done. We're not. No, we're not playing because he broke some girl's uh, knee or something. He got entangled with her and he won. Of right. course, this guy's right. huge. Yeah, it's freaking it, Goliath. injuries are pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, there was a field hockey one that occurred, uh, you know, a month or so a month ago, ago and yeah. knocked this girl's whole mouth apart, mm-hmm. you know, and 
whatever. I know that's that's bound to happen, but you know, let's just be real. The guys the, are the, typically stronger than women. Period. Correct. There's a higher yeah. chance of it happening when you have boys against girls, yeah. especially in a physical. It doesn't matter what sport it is, but uh, you know, there's the physicality of something. There's a reason why they're split. Sure. Right. So didn't you recently sent something that was like a movie coming out? <laughs> I oh my god! Yes. I laughed hilarious. out loud at the at the preview of it. What, do you remember what it was? It, it was, was it's by uh, She Ballers or something. Lady Ballers, I think. And it's yeah. by uh, <laughs> the guy uh, from who, 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 what company is Ben Shapiro with? Uh, Daily Wire. Daily Wire. The guy who owns that, Jeremy. Uh, Bowring or, or something yeah, like that. So they made this this movie about these guys that are trying to beat the system. Well, we're going to get back into playing basketball. We're just going to identify as women. And uh, one of the stars on it, the guy that's the the coach, he uh, is featured a lot in uh, Jeremy uh, Boring. He's uh, he's featured a lot. You can put this on the table or on the ground. Uh, a lot when it, on uh, God bless it on Fox, like uh, the the Greg uh, Gutfield show, and on the Five, he's on there every now and then. So he's funny. He's a funny guy. Yeah, he's 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 uh, very wealthy, and he's a conservative, obviously, and he and he's starting his own companies. If you remember uh, Harry's Razors, right? Yep. Yeah. And yep, Gillette, yep. he started his own razor company, Jeremy's Razors, and it's the same program as. Um, those Harry's and Dollar Shave and stuff like that. Yeah, those right. except his advertising doesn't show. Correct. Females with their breasts. And cut his off, advertising shaving. is funny as shit, just like this movie. And uh, <laughs> he also came out with a chocolate bar company because Hershey's was uh, um, screwing up. They did something. I don't know what he called it. It was called He She's or something like that. Um, but, well, you know uh, what? Got to capitalize on people's ignorance and, yeah. and stupidity. I think so, it's fantastic. But there, there's a whole push for a secondary uh, economy. You'll hear uh, Austin. Is, is there is there a clip to this movie that we can hear? Yeah, there's a, a preview sample on the YouTube. If you go back, I saw it. Another one is uh, Public Square. Have you heard of that one, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, I've got that on my phone. Um, who who's the who? God, I can't think of the guy. the The talk show host, um, the black guy. He used to be a Secret Service agent. Took over for Rush. Tony? Dan Bongino. Dan Bongino. Dan, Bongino, Dan yeah. Bongino's big into the secondary. Uh, uh, economy, you know, he created or was part of Rumble, uh, like a conservative marketplace. Type correct. So you know, if if this bank is being woke or whatever the situation, right, you can't get your loan and, and you don't support what they're supporting. Here are these banks over here that are getting set up. Here is this cell phone company. Here is this electric company. Here yeah. is this that support your same values, and we're not going to screw around and, and give money to abortion clinics or whatever you're for or against, right? So they're, they're set, trying to set up the or internet companies, <laughs> internet hosting. There's this whole second uh, secondary economy that they're trying to put in place. Yeah, I get it. And that uh, Jeremy's trying to do that with the, uh, movie, hold on, with the yeah, movies but, and everything. Mr. Producers, put the uh, thing on the screen. Can you put it in the very beginning again? Because that's just too funny. In a world where women's sports is being transformed. The Daily Wire calls foul with the most triggering comedy of the year. I will watch this. <laughs> There's some, a male wrestler. <laughs> this picture up <laughs> Guys, this is serious. Sports can be your pathway to a better life. Well, like yours. <laughs> Please don't steal my catalytic converter again. Winning matters. It's the key ingredient in becoming a winner. I Maybe mean, you should try it sometime. Are you gonna move? I am not. <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. I know you're not a woman. Hey, you don't know how he identifies. If you can beat them. What do you know about the U.S. Opens for the Global Games? What's your throw, sis? You want us to compete as women? Five thousand dollars. My lovely shot great puts it like a football. <laughs> this is the way the world is now. My eight-year-old daughter told me all about it. So a guy can become a girl with no physical changes at all. Oh. So I can be a woman on the court and a man in the bedroom. I can't believe it. Nice. You mean when you're sleeping? Yes. Coach? Alex. 
We could play basketball. We'd have to get the whole team back together. It's time. We're in. All right, you, you can kill I'm it in. here, but I'm in. Uh, essentially, Lady Ball. You know, was it Daily Wire uh, put this together? I, I think it's genius. It, uh, it this is. guy's capitalizing on 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 it's the a, ignorance. The per- it's the perfect perfect time for it too. Oh yeah. Uh, this one's gonna. This is gonna be a big movie. It's gonna be a huge spoof. It's only uh, <laughs> they're showing that <laughs> Paul hit this woman's face. I mean, that's like D- Dylan Mulvaney there, and this guy's he's picked up a yeah, whole gonna be, bunch of weights. Well, it's only streaming, so on the website, so it's not going to be released in any theater. It won't be. No. That's too bad. I'll watch. What it. website's going to be on? Oh, probably, probably the Daily, Daily Wire. Wire right? Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd pay for it. It looks like it's really well produced. I mean, yeah. it's like it looks. Ted Cruz. Yeah, I got Ted Cruz who's yeah, <laughs> featured yeah. in there. That's greatness. Uh, well, you know what? It, I think uh, I think it's a sign of the times, and uh, in, in good. You know, we we need our entertainment back. We need it now more than ever because uh, we need escapism. Yeah, there's too much you know? drama. Yeah, there's there's, there's too, too much, much drama in the world every right single now. day. In in it's it's frustrating because you know we're we're sending all this money all over the planet, so we don't have as much money, and we're having to pay more taxes and. You know the the stuff going on in Israel is, is horrific, uh, but it's kind of none of our business. And just the the impact it's having. You know the the teacher in, in, in it was a Queens or somewhere in New York where uh, this teacher had posted something. I'm for Israel, and she's a teacher there. And the students were 2,600 students. There was like uh, a percentage of them were Muslim, and they went after this poor teacher. She was like 500 kids outside the door, beat freaking the all. crap out of her. Yeah, they were just. Did they, they really physically accost no, her? They did. They, I don't think they they touched her, but they were they were banging on the door. What are they? The they were trying to get her. to her. Yeah. I mean, it's just come on, man. They, they doxed her. They found out where she lives. They found out about her family. Uh, there was, and they're coming after her. Yeah. There's no civility. It's anymore. criminal. We, we for anything we disagree on, there's no civility at all. It's it's become savage. Right. And I think it's all because of social media. I still believe that. Yeah, I think that's a big root that, that cause. Is the new, that's the new way to be savage with each other. It has extended from being a coward behind a little computer screen or a phone to in, in people's faces. Well, And it's always in a mob. It's always in mob style, right? No one can be, do it by themselves. It always has to be a mob of people here, a mob of people there. You know, because you know, that way it's, it's, it's not, uh, you're not accountable. I think that social media may have part of it is partly to blame. Yeah. But uh, there's there's a host of other things that oh, are yeah. in our society today that is contributing to it. Uh, people do not have any manners anymore. And I, I think that's uh, I think that's a product of how kids today, you know, these kids today. They're just not raised right anymore. Parent, right. Parenting has a True. big part it of this. It does start in the house. Parenting Everybody, does have a part of it. Everybody gets a trophy, right? That whole thing. Mm-hmm. Everybody's a winner uh, and along the social media thing. Entitlement. In, well, yeah, that. And uh, everybody that gets in front of a uh, of a camera now, is they're an influencer. And they're important right? And for having no talent whatsoever. Yeah, and they're right. the authority on things. And the the authority on things. That's right. And then there's an intense, intense desire for uh, attention. And intense f- and fame and yes. unhealthy Correct. desire. I mean, lot, some of the kids um, are. I mean, they they post something on Instagram. If they don't get fifty likes within an hour, they I panic. mean, it's suicidal. Right? It is. You know, they're just kind of like, oh my yeah. god, I no can't one likes me. This. And so that I think Sad. that's where a lot of this, you know, pronoun things coming from. If I go by they them, I'm going to be somebody to be talked about. You know what I mean? I'm going to be somebody that, that they, you know, that, that Correct. you know, they are a like, good point. Oh, he goes by they, do It's attention seeking. It's, it's, it's 100% I'm going to get, attention. I'm going to get attention if I do this. Right. Or be a furry, right? <laughs> those, those people that, hell? a furry. Yeah. A Tell furry, us about that. One that like, like, you know, drop I, when I started a being a furry, I, I was really lost. Were you like a fox or a raccoon? Um, a mongoose? I'm so a, did you? I'm a snake. <laughs> do you know what we're talking about, Larry? I do not. <laughs> what little furry is? I see the look on your face. You're like, what I the fuck not. are you talking about? <laughs> All right, so there are kids that dress up. It's not just kids. That's true. That is grown-ass adults. It's grown-ass adults. That do they this. are wearing uh, animal costumes and demanding to be treated uh, like uh, like animals. So, so like in some classrooms, uh, they... They have they have Put a, a bowl, box. They have a bowl of water on their on their on their desk, and they lap it up like a cat or a, or a dog, 
and and they're they're catering to this. They're called Correct. furries. Furries. Doesn't that border on like some sort of mental mental illness, disorder? Hundred percent. Well, yeah. you would think they mental would. illness. Well, just like uh, the guys who think they're women, that's a mental disorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you can't call it that. And which, by the way, it's been a documented a documented thing for decades and decades and decades. Yeah, it's in the DSM book. There's, a, I, yep. I wish I knew the term for it. Maybe you could look it up. It's but, gender but, dysphoria. Oh, that, is that what it is? Yes, gender dysphoria. Well, there you go. And it, it is. Do you see how Jeff said that? How his neck did the little bobble? Gender dysphoria. It's gender, gender dysphoria. dysphoria. <laughs> Man, I hope I don't get that again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It took me a while to get over it. It was last a rough time. year. That was a rough year. <laughs> it was embarrassing, is what it was. That cough is still nagging. <laughs> but, but, the, but the, my <laughs> penis will never be the same. <laughs> oh, God. But the thing is, I mean, it was, it was. In the list Barry, did, uh, of mental Larry, illnesses. did you want another beer or anything? Uh, no. I want to make sure you're taken care of over there. Uh, thank you, but right. not right at the moment. Yeah. No, so anyway, it, it was clearly in the mental in the list of mental illnesses that were treated by psychiatrists. Correct. And now it's you're you're a monster if you deny it. Well, I mean, it's it started like that. Well, back in <clears throat> the late eighty uh, late seventies, early eighties, I mean, homosexuality was listed as a as a disorder. And it's now become mainstream, and and uh, and right now they're saying that the people that like the kids, what, minor files, minor, minor attracted, minor attract. What is the the term? There's a term, minor attraction, minor or? attracted. Yeah, so that is like now it's included in the diagnostic statistics manual for personality disorders. It's now in there, kind of like how homosexuality was fifty years ago. They're so is there going to come a point it. where it's going to be normalized? That's just try. retarded. Come on. Some yeah, people are already trying to normalize it. Yeah. Well, like companies like uh, Balenciaga, <laughs> you yeah. know, trying to normalize it by putting that crap on there. It's just. It's, just, it's subtle. Right? So yeah. That's we'll just try to push in. the envelope a little bit further. Push the envelope a little bit further. And, and then on every TV show, it. every TV series. Yeah. They have to have a, this kind of relationship, that kind of relationship. Every commercial. Every commercial. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're trying desperately to normalize it, right? It's, you know what, though? Like like you, we started off the conversation tonight. It, it's, there, there. I think we are coming full circle where people start to put a little pushback. And hopefully it's, and the only way it's going to be able to do it is when you, we financially stunt them. You know, you got to stop paying for it. I think Disney has, I don't even know. What is Disney stock down? Oh, Disney stock's been down for the last year. It was up at, up at two hundred, possibly, and it's down to ninety or so now. Oh. And uh, they they actually came out with a statement. I don't know exactly what the statement says. You may be able to find it, Mister Producer. But basically, they release a statement that says, "Yes, our social and political uh, agenda, agenda, or whatever. I don't know how they phrase it, has impacted our bottom line." I'm completely paraphrasing that. There it so, is. Yeah, on so the New how, York Post. How, how does a a a uh, a board right? How does the board not totally hammer them on this? Because that has nothing to do with making money for your investors. That's why that one guy wants to get on the board. Uh, there, there's a there's two guys. Uh, we talked about it on a previous podcast. There's a uh, hostile, not hostile takeover, but uh, kind of, because he wants to get on the board to throw Bob Iger out as CEO. Right. Um, and, and to get his people on there to say, okay, let's right this ship and get back to business that made us money. The entertainment business? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's interesting? The people who write these filings, the SEC filings, is accounting, right? The CFO and accounting, 100% accounting. And, listen, I mean, it's it's very damning. It says, a recent company filing with the SEC included a reference to risk relating to misalignment with public and consumer taste. I mean, that's clearly stating a mistake. Correct. Misalignment. Then it says down here, Disney went on to note that consumers' perceptions of our position on matters of public interest, including our efforts to achieve certain of our environmental and social goals, often differ wildly and present risks to our reputation and brands. So I wonder if... That's if, the comment right there. Yeah, and I wonder if it's, this is like, you know, the CEO or CFO or the accounting, you know, the the accounting brass kind of taking a shot. Taking a shot at, like, the marketing and the HR and the... CEO, Bob Iger. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. Because remember that they're a different breed. 
accountants. You know what I mean? They are they're there for well, they're, a, a very particular line. purpose. Yes, they're there to c- t- count the pennies. Count the pennies and make sure they're in in compliance. Correct. Right. Well, plus they got an answer to the board, the the people, the stockholders. Well, everybody has to answer to the board. But yes. Yeah, the CEO. So okay. what is happening with Kathleen Kennedy, the, um, the nothing, president of Lucas Films? And nothing right now. I mean, but they got to like stir it up because she's like the main Bo- proponent behind I think this if, whole. I think if Bob Iger gets canned, she won't be far behind. Is it Dave? What what role is Dave Filoni playing? He's whole... a he's a director producer. He reports it to Kathleen Kennedy. Well, I wonder. I wonder what the numbers are. I, I don't think they said what the numbers are, but man, but their I, stock. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know the stock is down a certain percentage, but um, how is, you know, uh, park sales and how is... Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, park there's a sales, ton of other revenue streams, right? Well, the park, well, the parks have funded the poor movie revenue because they've had eight or nine movies this year that have all lost money outside of the Guardians of the Galaxy, I think. Every movie they released lost money up to over a billion dollars i think if you add it all up was what i saw wow and the parks were making so much money they were funding that and making that difference up so we all agree that that's a lot of money right it's a lot of money that's less than one percent we sent to uh ukraine <laughs> right yeah put that in perspective yeah, yeah you don't really want to talk about that and that's at a stalemate too but anyway i don't want to talk about that yep yep yep, yep. So All right. you know, we're we're I'm glad we're we're seeing some full circle shit. We'll see what how the, this thing's going to play out. In the meantime, uh, what does Disney have around the corner as far as some of the new Star Wars releases? I thought they they were having some new Star Wars release. What, what is it? Well, they just came out. Is R two D two one or something like that, or is it? No, there was the um, there's one coming out called um, shit. Uh, called it's shit? not called oh, shit, wow. but uh, a funny name. the acolyte, yeah, especially for Disney. <laughs> yeah. A, yeah, it's called Should have called it poop. Right. Well, this last movie that just got released, Wish, not, I guess it not just doing well. tanked. Terrible reviews, just tanked. Yeah, they're so dumb. They should rename that to shit. Um, <laughs> um, well, Lucasfilm hasn't officially confirmed, but there's a Star Wars 10. Yes. There's supposed to be movies coming out more with uh, the, the chick. What's her name? I Princess like her. Leia? No. no Ray. 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 Yeah. She's got another... A set of movies coming out. I like her. That's going to be interesting. To me, she's kind of like a resurgence for me in Star Wars. I thought she was an awesome character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She took on the uh, the Emperor's powers and the Walk of the Skywalker power. Uh, she's got an interesting mix. Yeah, I, I that think was it followed cool. too closely the format of the first th- four, five, and six. You thought it did follow it? Too it, closely? it followed too closely the format. I think personally. Uh, Just swap her out with Luke Skywalker. Yeah, not enough uh, creativity there. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I, it, that, I could see that a little bit. But I, I thought I could have sworn I saw there was something about uh, the story of R2-D2 that was coming out. Oh, his childhood? <laughs> He was just nuts and bolts on a, yeah. a bowl. He was like a little tiny robot, and they <laughs> kept adding to him. He came out of his mother's vagina. Oh, wow. What What? what just huh. happened? Little so there will be a second time. <laughs> hold on. This will be a second time. Second time a series will focus on R2-D2 and C-3PO. The first was an animated series that ran. Okay. So Star Wars, a droid story. I wonder how many consecutive shows we've had with the word vagina in it. I have 175 posted, so probably that many. Yeah, I'm thinking every. I think we're. I think we're batting a hundred percent, a thousand percent on that word. Yes. Usually from Jeff. Yeah. No. Well, he usually he like throw the word creamy. I mean, hell, it used to be like a drinking game. What's what's he was going to say next? Arcatooth is drink. You know, <laughs> yeah. creamy drink. You know, just. Yeah. yeah, so there's certain words that just penis a, like moist. Oh. Moist is one of them. Moist is a great yeah. one. Creamy. Forward. Yeah. Yes. Well, so uh, you know what? It's a fantastic time of year. Uh, it's flying by though. You know, it, it Halloween happened really quick, and now uh, Thanksgiving just kind of like we're, we're already here. Yeah, God yeah. Bless. it's, it's over. I kind of felt that by. way too. Like both were non-eventful. Yeah, it's just. Uh, I mean, we, we had a lot of stuff going on, but even with a lot of stuff going on, it was still. It just it's starting to float fly by. It just seems like it, there's I don't, what is the difference? Age. Is it the age? Is it the rat race? I mean, what is going on here that it's just flying by? I'm like, 
every year is just going by faster and faster and faster. It's just nuts. I think it's age. I think it's uh, rat race. Yeah. Combination of them. Kids are grown and out of the house. Well, kids are grown. grown. <laughs> 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 haven't quite moved out yet. <laughs> waiting on that program, but that's all right. They can take right. their time. Yeah. So there's a uh, Mr. Producer pulled up a list of some of the the Star Wars stuff that's coming up. That's kind of what I saw. Uh, there, there's all kinds of different things that are populating here. Larry, they got Star Wars. Larry, who's Larry? Oh, yes, you'll be uh, you'll be seeing me on the silver screen. Yeah. Uh, in the coming months. <laughs> Larry, a copier repairman, finds himself derelict on a desert planet. Follow him as he replaces a toner in vacuum roller pins. That is a retarded. That's not real. That was back in 2022. That is not real. That can't be real. That's <laughs> like some that. YouTube. <laughs> Larry. I will tell you, the name Larry is not a very highly respected name. You notice it? I mean, Jay Leno always used to make, hey, Larry, Larry the janitor, you know, hey, think, Larry, think, come here. I think a vacuum repairman. Vacuum repairman, Larry Larry and the Three Stooges. Yes. Well, I mean, but there's some power people. Larry Ellison? There was, uh, well, but hold on. on the Bob Newhart show, my there, other brother. Some, I'm Larry. Larry and my other, my other brother, brother Larry. Yeah, yeah. Larry. No, 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 it was Daryl. It was Daryl. I'm Larry, and this is Daryl, and my other brother, Daryl. Oh, right, right. Oh, I think Larry's oh, just yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Larry is a masculine name. It, it's 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 from a British origin. It comes from is it from uh, Lawrence? Lawrence. The name has grown to stand on its own. Lawrence is Larry. He's got a rich guy. history. Yeah, he's you know, which thankfully for Larry can be passed down with ease. The title refers to someone who comes from Laurentum. Laurentum. <laughs> I think we should start saying an ancient city in, of, of Roman Larry era. of Arabia. Larry of Arabia. Yes, instead of Lawrence of Arabia. How about just Labia? There you go. Some is, reduction. La- no? is Larry a yeah, nickname for Lawrence? No, my real name on the birth certificate is Larry. Yeah, I get yeah. that question a lot on legal documents. Is your real name Lawrence? Lawrence. I mean, but is, no. <laughs> but is that a nickname for Lawrence? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is. I don't think I have ever known that. Interesting. Huh. But I asked you. my parents one time, why in God's name did you name me Larry? There was, hey, Larry! There was, <laughs> sounds like something oh, on the oh, roper. Larry! Uh, and they said, well, uh, we, we don't know. It was kind no, of a, no kind family, of, No family connection. I huh? wasn't named after like Uncle Larry or anybody like that. It was just kind What's, of a trendy name at the time, like trendy for like a week or 10 yeah. days. <laughs> So why are your three sons Larry the Second, Larry the Third, and Larry the Fourth? <laughs> that I don't understand at all. <laughs> Was it Larry <laughs> the uh, the Gigolo on Three's Company? Larry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> again, <laughs> another got my, goof got my character. <laughs> if you had any doubt, that probably right there. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Larry was cool, man. He always showed up with his uh, his, his V neck chest hair hanging out, the medallion, all gold, shiny. Right. Coming. Hey, how you doing? You know, there was never any movie characters named Larry that was played by Paul Newman or you know Bill Holden or you know one of those guys. Yeah, no. yeah. That's sad. But I'm stuck with it. What am I going to do? Well, there's a na- there's a movie out. It came out in 2022. Oh, that's the same one. Larry, a TV movie in 1974, true story about a man wrongly confined, uh, wrongly confined, the California State Mental Hospita- uh, Hospital at uh, Car- Carmel over 26 years. Was yeah, it there like, what, what about the penthouse guy? Wasn't his name Larry? Oh, Larry. Larry Flint. Yeah. Larry Flint. There we go. Was Hustler. Well, Hustler. he he got Hustler. shot and oh. was paralyzed. Oh. Wasn't there a uh, Sasquatch movie? Something in the Hendersons? Oh, it's Harry. Oh, Harry. Harry. <laughs> Uh, not Larry and the Hendersons. Although Larry and the Hendersons, yeah. although that would have brought a lot of respect to Larry. Yeah. That's true. It would have. Yeah. Off by one letter. <laughs> one letter. So close. So close. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a great movie, by the way. I loved it. Harry and the John Hendersons. John Lithgow in it, I believe. Yeah, that was funny. I I, uh, I won movie tickets to that one. You know how you listen to the radio and you call in and you're thinking, I'm going to be the fifth caller? Or, Dial 1-800-929-75. Or it, it, was, it was late at night, and I was calling and calling, and I was like, it, it rang. I mean, it answered, and they're like, hello? And I'm like, did I win the tickets? And they're like, what? Tickets? For what? I was like, uh, oh, the Harry and the Hensons. Oh, you want two tickets? Yeah, okay, we'll give you two tickets. <laughs> so you didn't really win. <laughs> I, I, exactly. I was like, what the hell? This is totally anticlimactic. I, I mean, it was on the radio. I mean, right. it was really late. It was like t- midnight. Right. 
I've won. I've won once. You know, was, That's crazy. It was funny. What did you win? I won uh, a two liter of Pepsi. Oh, do you still have it? No. <laughs> I remember it was up in Cincinnati, and I was I don't know. It was late at night, and uh, they're like, "Hey, call our twenty two. Call in, you get a free two liter of Pepsi." So <laughs> did I you? did. That's probably why I won because no one else wanted it. Right. It cost you twenty bucks to get there. Yeah. yeah no, they sent a coupon, and, and they're uh, like, "Sorry, you're twenty one. Call again." Yes. And uh, they oh, said my that name. Was the worst. I yeah. was. They oh, didn't yeah. put me on the air, but they at least said my name on the air. So I was like ten or eleven or something like that. So that was my excitement. But I've never. I've tried all those times in the past. Do radio stations still do that? Have no. call in. I don't think there's think a lot so. of people With that concert listen. tickets. I hear them uh, giving away concert tickets. I mean, who even listens to the radio anymore? Do they? I do. Do you really like the the radio? Yeah, radio? I listen to talk radio. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, we put it on like the Christmas Channel, the and here in Dallas, and sometimes I'll I'll pop it on the very. But you, I, I hear what you're saying. I, uh, it's, it's like a lost medium now. I think. It, it is, and it's it it's 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 losing. You know, well, I, I know mean, my, even Ford was going to take a- AM radio off their cars. Well, they said that was a design to reduce the footprint of the talk radio. Well, not just that, but it's was it really though? No, the, it was a design to eliminate the voice of the right wing. Correct. Because well, I know, but but was it really, or was it you know so few people listen to the radio? It's like why are we building this into our cars? Why put any radio in there then? Well, I think FM delete all of them. Yeah, no, I, that's true. There's millions and millions of people that listen to talk radio. Yeah. Well, then that makes no sense at all, other yeah. than being like an agenda. And and what they said is like, yeah, they put it in there, but to make the tuner so bad that it's hard to get the stations. Hmm. All right, well, then we don't buy Ford. There yes. we go. Is that a thing, though? Uh, is that real, what you just said? That the, the, oh, is I it can't Ford imagine. specific? Well, that's or was what it was all? being said at the time, that they're, they're, they're going to put a cheap antenna in there to make the reception difficult, whether they did or not. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, um, to do a, a quick 90 here, I am sampling our bourbon. I feel zero heat. Zero. I mean, it's... What, do we want to talk about our bourbon now? Yeah. I mean, it's almost like it's... I felt the burn. I'm not feeling any. No. Yeah, I, I, I felt the burn initially. I actually like this a lot. Yeah, it's actually not bad at all. Yeah. There's yeah, no burn, it's but... It's smooth. It's not harsh. It uh, doesn't make you want to go... <gasps> Yeah, no, I'm it's not, not bad. Any. I just I don't even know what it's called. Hold on, it's uh, it's, it's Virginia it? Bourbon it's Bowman Bowman Bourbon. No, let me go right? get it. It's oh, hold on. all right. Well, oh, we left it out in the yeah, God bless see, in the see green I mean? room. See how we've gone backwards since the last time you were here? <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> not prepared. <laughs> oh not shit! The last time Larry was here, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on in this room. You know, we stripped out a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, it opened it up. You could breathe in here. Not so claustrophobic. Added some lighting. All right. So our right. producer's putting it up there. But it is Bowman Brothers, right? It's Bowman Brothers, yes. Small batch. 90 proof. That's the thing. And look, we've oh had boy. some 90 proof, too. But this is like, I'm telling you, maybe it's my taste buds. Maybe it's because I sampled the 125 proof before I came out here today. I don't know what it is, but this is super light. Um, but it's also where did, super Where did sweet. you get it? Total wine. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, I think sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll have 120 proof, and you're just like, wow, it doesn't feel like 120 proof. It's true. Right? This may be the same type of scenario where, you know, some 90 proofs, you're, you're still going to feel some some alcohol burn. You, I don't at all on this. It's smooth. It's got some sweetness to it. Yeah, um, it's good. Mr. Producer, is this bottle six to seven years like it states on the, the website here? I mean, because um, it does. I mean, let me, let me take away. First of all, I don't like it. Right off the get-go, because it doesn't have that pop, that, that strong taste. However, it still doesn't mean it's horrible. I, the taste is good. It's sweet. It's got some light caramel in there. Maybe it's a little bit of brown sugar. It doesn't pop. I don't taste any spice. I don't taste any tobacco. I don't taste uh, any no. vanilla hints uh, or it, anything like that. The finish, it tastes really good, but it goes away very fast, mm-hmm. I think. The finish on it, there's not much there. Um, it's because it's watered. The okay. this is they they buy their <laughs> distillate from it's Buffalo true. Buffalo Trace. <coughs> oh, really? So, so their MGP is, is from Buffalo Trace. Well, it's not MGP, but it's Buffalo Trace distillate, and they buy it and then they age it in Virginia. Nice, interesting. I think it's solid. Yeah. I mean, it's you know it's nothing amazing, but um, 
it's it's definitely enjoyable. Yes. On a scale of one to ten, dudes like this, Sean says four. Um, I'm going to go with probably 6.8. I'm going to give it a six. I'm with a six. I'll go six. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, it's solid. You know what? I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a 4.9. Well, the high and the low are thrown out. Oh. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> that leaves it so as a six. So, relevant. Right. so it's a six. So I think it's good. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, it, it's, it just goes away really fast. Yeah. You know, that's what it is. To Sean's point, it's, it doesn't pack a punch. And it's not alcohol punch. It's flavor punch that it's, that it's lacking. So, Well, I was listening to this guy, uh, really, really snooty. Uh, on one of these Instagram memes, and you know, he takes the bottle of bourbon and puts it in a Glen Karen glass and swirls it, then dumps it out, and then puts it in there again, and he tastes it, smells it, pulls it away, breathes a couple more times, puts it back up to his nose. He's got this huge knocker too. I mean, his nose just goes right into that orifice, just fills up the whole glass. It was disgusting, actually, to see it. But he was just like. <laughs> He was kind of like, yeah, you know, you smell it, you do this, you do that. He says, and then he, he makes a statement, says, you know, this one is 105 proof. And he says, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, this much distilled water. He says, there's a, like a little equation of how much water you should yep. add to it. He says, the optimum, um, the optimum proof would be 35. For 70 you to, yes, proof? Uh, yeah, 30, 70 proof, 35% alcohol to get the perfect uh, amount of notes that pop come out of it. I disagree, but who the hell am I to, to tell this guy? You know, he seemed like he knew what the hell he was talking about. It seemed like seventy proof to me doesn't seem like it's gonna be able to punch those notes because anything one hundred five, hundred ten, twenty, whatever, to me those guys have the most taste. They're oh, the yeah. most concentrated. Now, is he talking about the nose? Is he talking about adding water to release the nose? Uh, he's like or is the, he talking the bouquet, about the whole thing, the bouquet, the so whole. The, so the smell, the best sampling. Uh, does that include the taste? You know, Sounds I, like it's just the nose. I, well, you know what? Frankly, I I, I skipped it really quick. So, like, you know, first of all, I was like distracted with his nose, and I was like, you know what? He said thirty five percent. I was like, like you know what? I'm it. done. I'm done. This guy's an idiot. But, <laughs> but but evidently, it's it it seems to be a thing out there. So, well, maybe you do it in there, and you and you put the get it down to seventy, smell it, and then dump it out in the. I, it I back thought in. it was interesting though how he had this little blotter, a little uh, distilled water blotter, kind of like what they had at 1845 distillery located in Lower right. Crossing. Right. You know, it's like a little uh, blotter of uh, distilled. So he put the little it's like thing an eyedropper. It was like an eyedropper, but it didn't have the uh, little squeezy thing. So it got it, it sucked like in a there. pipette. Is it called that? A pipette? Oh yes, a pipette. Come oh. on, guys! Did you not have a chemistry yes. class in, in high school? Yes, pipettes. Mr. Producer, what exactly is a pipette? It's your penis. Ooh. <laughs> when you said little, is that what you meant? Oh, well, I'm hungry. Anything like a with an et on the end. A pipette. <laughs> See, a pipette. Yeah. I don't think it had the uh, little. Uh, oh, there's all sorts of different types oh, of pipettes. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, this you know what? Medical. I think it's the, the top to the three to the right, well, or second and third. Kind of has a uh, left, left, left. bulbous end on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it was. Well, so, anyways, my point is that I found it was interesting is that he said that the, it is this proof and he added so much. And there was like this little equation he gave to be able to, a quick way for you to dumb it down to this per- correct, correct proof. So, correct. I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of interesting. You know, the, the, I've almost gotten some of this. They sell Kentucky uh, limestone water that you can buy. And we could bring it up here and do that. And we can drip it into our bourbon. Well, I'll tell you yes. what. How about we just go buy a limestone rock and we can make our own water? Well, Ooh, uh, like squeeze the water out of it? Yes. No, we just they do what they do. They take a cup, they pour it on the water, and they got a bit at the bottom that captures it, and then they bottle it. Oh, it's not like a sponge? <laughs> then you'll squeeze it? I'll bring the pipette. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. Larry on the spot. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> But they small. say that's the best water to do that with is the limestone. So it's the bourbons. At least the Kentucky ones are made with limestone water. Yeah. I know that Jack Daniels is. I remember that from my distillery tour. Correct. Well, it's very light. It is. It's good. It's I like bad. it. It's not bad. For a 90 proof uh, bourbon. Uh, it's, and single barrel. It's a small batch. A small batch. Same thing. Yeah, you know, we... Uh, I'm going to change gears again, you know, to jump off Another that. 90 degrees? Yeah, you know, we're going to go back to the whole, uh, we're talking about Star Wars. We're talking about um, 
you know, we, we before the, the podcast started in the green room, we were discussing, you know, when was the last time you went to the movie theater? You know, some of the excitement. You know, I, I think, first of all, I I go to the movies about maybe once a year. Yeah. Maybe once a year. Maybe. And, you know, there was a time where we went to the movies frequently. Oh, I guess yeah. that's before all the oh, yeah. streaming things came out that, you know, oh, this is coming out. It, it, it wasn't available at that time. Now things are available all the time on a touch of a button. You know, it's it just... It was exciting. It's kind of like, to me, it's kind of like comparing that to the, the holidays. It was a festive thing. Oh, you go to the movie theater, it's exciting. You got lots of bright lights and all this flashing shit and the popcorn, and you get to get a free refill if you get a tub. And and you go to that... Walmart and get your candy and smuggle it in. Oh, yeah. You, know, like a you didn't have to take out a loan to go yes. to the movies. Right. Yeah. Oh, I remember yeah, when we used too. to, there was a time where we would go every Christmas the movies oh yeah movie. that's a massive uh yeah theater day it's like one of the busiest days we go every christmas uh it was just for a, a period of time uh and i think uh, my wife's family did the same thing because we did it down here when i got married uh we did that a few times as well all, all the holidays are huge christmas uh, yeah it was a, it was it was a big gathering uh and it was always always packed always packed and you're always wearing the nice clothes Right, so you want to look nice because it's Christmas. You're wearing your corduroys and your plaid shirt and belt. Yeah, when I hold on, hold on. corduroys, <laughs> corduroys, <laughs> corduroys. Do you remember corduroys? You're running down the hall. <laughs> 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 there was there was a time when it was coming back, but it didn't last very long at all. Oh hell, I had corduroys within the last ten years. Not not because I bought them, because the wife bought them. And they were yeah, but they cool. didn't. It, that didn't last long. I no. I remember it coming back and stalled. No, I was gaining weight. Did they grow out of them right away? As I walk along, my two thighs say to each other, "Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me." <laughs> Smacking sounds. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you guys watch that TikTok or Instagram that I sent you about the about the lady who was having uh, ball chafe problems? Oh God. Oh. I sent it to you right before our, our podcast. Yeah. I, she goes, ladies, it's a guy, obviously. Don't you hate it when your balls kind of slip outside your pants and they're rubbing and they get chafed? And you know that if you don't take care of them and tuck them back in there, that it's, it's going to get more and more painful. He goes, why did God make ladies like this or something like that? Wow. You know, from movie theaters to ball chafes, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, you're so talking about your thighs slapping. So yeah, yeah. There's no ADD going on here. <laughs> yeah. None at all. So, you know, when we were younger, it was exciting because you had a, a finitive amount of money that you took because you got your, I got my allowance. Let's just talk about me. I got my allowance. I was like, hey, I got a buck. I don't know what it was. You know, you can get a Coke for 30 cents, candy bar for 25 cents. Well, the movies were like a buck, buck and a half. A nickel. In. Well, they were fifty cents did, uh, yeah. in New New, New New Jersey when I lived on the on the base there in Fort Monmouth. It was fifty cents for uh, children to get into that movie theater, and um, uh, I remember it, it, it was just pretty much big Jolly Rancher bars oh, yeah. that you buy there, oh, and yeah. you get a big old bushel. I mean, it was just exciting. We'd go I, all it, the time, and it, a group would go like it was an event to do that evening. Correct. Was, Let's go to the movies, and you're like, looking forward to it, and it was fun and. You talk about the movie in the parking lot after you're done, but now when somebody says, let's go to the movie, I'm like, are you out of your mind? I'm going to get shot. <laughs> i got to go mingle with the rest of the rude human beings. Yeah. just You know, and there's that's too. I mean, and plus, there's so much, so much weird shit going on out there. You don't know what to expect. And well, there's a whole lot of other things I would rather do with $100 than the wife and I going to the movie. Seriously. Yes. That's my po- that's I, exact crazy. sentiments. It is ridiculously expensive to go out there. I'm kind of like, you know, you, you get there because I, I take the kids every now and then, shoot, like once a year, and I'll go ahead and I'll buy. I'll buy in advance, and I'm just like, shit, there's six of us going, and I just dropped, you know, 20 bucks a piece on this. That's ridiculous. I really thought that there, I mean, when when huge TVs, home TVs and home theater systems and, and Blu-ray and DVD, all the, you know, all this fancy technology and amazing quality, I really thought movie theaters were gone. Like I did they, too. Yeah. And they are not. Yeah, no. well, especially They're with really the not. COVID that happened and everything was just Well, that was like a, you know, a crazy economic anomaly, right? I mean, so I can a lot of things went away during COVID, but I mean, I th- I just thought it just no one needs it anymore. You have a, a movie theater at home. I, I I don't know this for sure, but I think what's keeping the theaters alive is uh, the kids movies. You were looking at the Disney movies and stuff, yeah. and I think parents like to take their kids 
Uh, let's get out of the house. Let's go yeah. watch a movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, now Just you, shut can even, up. you can even stream right. first releases. Like Not you know all of them. Like When they come out on the movie theater, they're also releasing them in some form or fashion on streaming platforms. So you... Even to, I mean, even to catch a brand new movie, you, you don't have to wait. You can have it the same time they release it. I mean, am I am I crazy? I know that they were. Well, they were and doing then, that and then for some production studios were like, "This is a horrible idea." Well, they were doing that for a while, and then they lost their asses on it. Disney uh-huh. was doing that, HBO was doing that, and they lost their asses on it, so they stopped doing it. That's one of the things because I remember HBO was releasing on their streaming service and in the theater at the same time. I was like, "Why am I going to?" Why am I going to go pay to go see this? I'm going to sit at home and watch on my 80-inch TV. Right. Yeah, really. I got a question for you guys. Speaking of movies, what would you say is the last, like, masterpiece movie that came out? And I'm talking uh, level of Star Wars, Godfather, Jaws, something along those lines. That came out in a movie theater. what, What is the last masterpiece that you think has been released? That Ooh, we have a, seen? That's a tough one. No, you don't have to have seen it, no. Um, like Gone with the Wind? <laughs> with Masterpiece, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, Larry, I would, that I was the say, last one, Larry. I would say one of the the late, <laughs> last ones uh, was probably like Avatar. In, uh, you had to go see Avatar simply because it was this, this, this uh, computer CGI. That so was technology it was, this, wise. it was this new thing, and you're kind of like, "What is this? We got to go see it." And it turned out it was pretty cool. I think Matrix is up there as well, the first one. Yeah, Matrix a- as a game changer. I think. Yeah. I, th- I think. As I don't a ga- think that's as a game exactly changer. what you're saying. Larry. As a masterpiece, I yeah. think uh, Lord of the Rings, the trilogy, Jurassic that whole Park, thing perhaps? was a masterpiece. Well, I mean, just look at grossing highest grossing movies of all time. Titanic's up there. I would classify Titanic as a masterpiece. I think yeah, so it was too. Good. Yeah. I think so too. I think Saving Private Ryan masterpiece is a masterpiece. No Probably one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yeah, Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. That was a funny movie. Near Don't the top. It. it was funny movie. <laughs> it was funny. It was stupid, but funny. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a masterpiece though. But. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, can't, you know, uh, the they don't they hobbits, don't they don't make them like they used they to. They don't make, make uh, big, huge, you know, epic masterpieces hardly anymore. No. That's why. That's why I said Lord of the Rings. That was early two thousands when those came out. Um, I think you had the Harry Potter's. Those were big and sweeping. I don't think those were masterpieces uh, yeah. quite like Lord of the Rings was. I think Lady Ballers has a chance. Oh, Could be. I'm in. Yeah. Um, any Will Ferrell movie I think is right up there. Anchorman. Oh, Elf. Elf. Elf is super. It's a really funny movie. Not a masterpiece. Well, movies like Elf and the Pee Wee movie, those are, I would classify those as classics. Right. They're good movies. They're funny. Everybody's seen them. But I wouldn't really necessarily call them a masterpiece. No, masterpiece. I would definitely not. So I would say like Schindler's List. Masterpiece. Is a, is a, is a classic one. It's a cerebral, I would say, more on, that, on those lines. Historical based. You know, a classic... Uh, yeah, that's tough. That's a I tough think movie. a lot of the historical classics are going you're gonna have to do with history and stuff like that. Um, but my it, point is, the the answer is there really hasn't not that been many, any. not that many, not There's many while, recently. Maybe. You can go through time, and there's probably stretches where, you, like the '80s and the early '90s, terrible movies for the most part that came out. Um, and there have been some good ones, like uh, Inception. Have you guys seen the movie Inception? Oh, that's mm-hmm. outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Larry, yeah. I can't believe you haven't seen it. I've never heard of it. Inception. It's got... Uh, it's, it's, it's got it's the, Leonardo DiCaprio yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, It's outstanding. I think another one... It's an A+. Plus. I rarely give A+. Plus. What's the other Christopher Nolan movie where Matthew McConaughey is out in the in the space? Intergalactic? I don't think... I never saw that one. one. That is another really good one. Really, um, it's it's you really have to pay attention to what's going on. <clears throat> Lots of time right. travel-y type shit. Ooh, I like that stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spout off a few of the uh, some of the uh, all time top hundred films of all time, and I'll, I'll just kind of go right down from the top. Yeah, go from uh, ten to one. Uh, from ten to one, hey, you know, I'm gonna go from twenty. Ooh. So, so the, your list is so saith who. Uh, all-time box office top 100 films, domestic, unadjusted, domestic, unadjusted, and worldwide. Moneymakers? Uh, no, it's filmsite.org box office. Okay. Uh, no, Moneymakers is on the is a different category. Domestic gross, 
Uh, this one is just some of the, the, the best movies. We have to do okay. critics. So, we have right. to do. Okay, go right. ahead. So I'll, I'll start like with the 20. Now. I think uh, came out in 1994, good. a cartoon. It's called The Lion King. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars, Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Pass. Oh, yeah. no way. Jurassic Park, 1983. 1993. Star Wars, Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. Yes. Avengers Agreed. Endgame, 2019. No, it. Avatar, 2009. Yes. In 1959, Ben-Hur. Oh, brother. Have we seen Ben-Hur? Uh, I've seen, seen parts ben of it. Uh, episode 5, The Star Wars, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh... 101 Dalmatians in 1961. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, The Force Awakens, Episode 7 of Star Wars. a lot of Star Wars in here. This is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in 1937. Uh, Good movie. These are all Disney. But you know what? Well, whatever. I'm just coming up the list here. Uh, We've got The Exorcist. Now that's we're a classic. Talking. That Exorcist was on TMC the other night. I watched that. That's a, a classic. Movie. Have you guys seen that? That's oh, another Disney movie. It's yeah. very disturbing. I remember seeing that in the theater and being scared out of oh, my mind. It's very Lord. disturbing. So good. So, Dr. Zavago. 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 With Omar Sharif. 1965. I was going to say 60s. It sounds right. And in 1975, Jaws. Great movie. Classic. Good Number one. six. The Ten Commandments in 1956. With Charlton Heston yeah. as Moses. Pray for my cold dead fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Planet of the Apes have got to be in there somewhere. <laughs> Titanic 1997. That's yeah, what I'm talking we called about. that. And E.T. Oh, yeah. E. The Extraterrestrial. Uh, sure. Yeah, good one. Oh, the sound of music. Oh, that's uh. a good one. That's a good one. What? That's a good one. Come on, Larry. No. You don't like musicals, huh? No. Oh, <laughs> but that, ah, was a good that was very Jeez. resounding. No, yeah, it was. no, no. Bruce, all the music. Son of a bitch. Yeah. How dare you? The original West Side Story with Natalie Wood. Ooh. And, and another Star Wars as number two. Yeah, this is jaded. Yeah, it's the A New Hope. It's the original Star Wars that came out. However, look, it's it's kind of right. I mean, think about it. The fact the, that Episode One was even in the top one hundred makes this list wrong. Episode One was oh, terrible. God. Terrible, eh, whatever. Absolutely terrible. It actually ruined the whole the whole Star Wars. The original? No, 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 no. This is the original. So yes. it's not Episode One. It's technically Episode Four. No, no, I, I know, but I'm talking about the episode first one that one. released. All right. So what do you think the number one moon? Give us the year. Uh, 1939. Oh, Wizard God. of Oz. What's that? Gone with or, the wind. Gone with the wind. Wizard of Oz. Gone with the wind. Ah! I think Wizard of Oz was 32 or 37. I think. Yeah. I've never even seen Gone with the Wind. I've never seen it in its I entirety. Have. I've seen it's, clips of it here and there. It's and four like, hours. Yeah, oh, four hours. It's four hours. And it's four. also been classified as racist, so you'll never see it again. Oh. Is it a, is it an intermission? I got no time for that. Four <laughs> hours to sit there? God, four you bring hours. a sack lunch. I've got the DVD somewhere. But I'll tell you what, that's the cool thing about being in some of these uh, newer movie theaters is that they are serving... Alcohol Booze. and meals, not just like a hot dog or some nachos or yeah. some sort of. That is kind of cool. Yeah, you can go up there. I'll have a, I'll have a hamburger with French fries with some onion rings and some buffalo wings and some. Clark Gable. And and cheese is this the movie stuff. where he says, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn? Gone yeah. with the wind. Don't yeah, know yeah. The wind. that's it. And what is the female's name? The what? Toto? No, from Gone with the Wind. Scarlet. Scarlett O'Hara. Yeah. <laughs> I said Charlotte you O'Hara. Did. We were playing a trivia game on uh, Thanksgiving. Was it Thanksgiving night? I think so. We were playing a, th- uh, a, a trivia game, and that was the question. It um, was. It was. Yeah. God, I should have gotten that. And Hattie won an Academy Award as... Uh, as Mammy? Mammy. 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 First what the hell? black to get an uh, Academy Award. What? Well, oh, I, didn't nice. know, I didn't know Superman was in that. George Reeves? Yes, the original Superman. The original George Reeves. I didn't realize that either. Yeah. I wonder if he came flying in the side. He did. He did. <laughs> and it totally went along with the story. <laughs> did he shoot himself in the head at the end of it? Yes, he was. <laughs> oh, yes, what? he did. What the hell? Is that way the movie ends? Some dark no, that's how he, he ended. ended. <laughs> uh, oh, did he really? Yes. He committed suicide, huh? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I tell you, uh, but th- 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 those are some of the cool things, uh, th- you know, the the food, uh, the booze, and another aspect of some of the newer movie theaters is the fact that the seats recline. 
I mean, yeah, you've got right. more. That I mean, nice. I've been to a couple. Like uh, Austin invited me to go with some of his friends to some movie, like the End Game of the Infinity or something like that. And we were sitting. We went to this movie theater. I swear to God, I was sitting in an eighteen-inch chair, and I was absolutely miserable. Front fucking row. The movie was like three feet from my face. I, I'd say I I'm like, not. I'm not doing that. Well, you know what. It was a commitment at that point. I'd ask for my money back. Well, that's another thing you can do. You can choose your seats now. That, yes. I love it. You go yes. online, you tap I mean, the chair. Is, yeah. You can reserve yes. online. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. But for then, an extra then six bucks. somebody in your seat, and you got to ask them to move, and then there's a big fight, and they, you know, I mean, you get right. shot. You Just like down. in the NFL. Like they're Maimed. all fighting in all the stands. Right. Are they really? Well, almost every game now. So I want I want the, the, I know for a fact the last movie my dad saw in a theater was Pacific Rim. What year did that come out? Pacific Rim? I don't I'm going to go with 97. No, it wasn't that long. 20-something. Wasn't that like a documentary about volcanoes and 2008. Things? 2018. <laughs> no. 18. No, it had no, 2013. Did he have Rihanna in it? So the last this movie like he a saw in the theater was 10 years ago. That was a Charlie Day? And we went, and we were visiting him out there in Tahoe. And me... My wife and the boys were out there, and we're like, well, let's go see a movie. And the boys were like, let's go see Pacific Rim. So Wasn't we it Godzilla? Is that Godzilla? Well, it's the big, yes, it's the big monsters and robots, oh right? God. I've never saw that. So we I went there, it. and they had these chairs that you could spend an extra five bucks on that had the big subwoofers built into them. And they oh, vibrated. Nice. And it was so freaking loud in that place. He's refused to go see a movie again. He goes, that was the worst experience of my life. Seeing a movie, so now he'll never go to a movie because I, I was out there. I was like, "Hey, you want to go see me?" He's like, "No." That, Pacific Rim. That, that's so. That was so the last movie I'll see in the theater. That's no, so but I it, get it though. But there are some movie theaters, and look, you can be in a regular movie theater. He's and eighty-one. It could be all over the place with the sound. I mean, the sound could be completely palatable, sure. and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, the ship shows up. And you can't freaking hear. Your ears are ringing for the next two hours. Right. Yeah. But you can hear the jet engine, engines from Tom Cruise's jet in the theater oh, next right. door. Yeah. yeah. So my question the is, Maverick. will we get to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm done with movie theaters? We're almost there now. I'm there. Probably. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm done. Like, yeah. Like my dad. Is he going to be like, it, yeah, I don't want the noise anymore. It's a pain. I don't think I'm at that point. It's got to be an epic movie. Like, I, the last one I tough. watched was Top Gun because it was like, oh, that's one you have to watch in a movie theater. Same. But uh, it has to be epic. Otherwise, I won't do it. I got, and it was a good movie. I got to share good. with you, good. a lot of uh, my experiences going to the movies in the last probably five, six years uh, were, were, weren't were very fun because I'd fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> you have that problem. Or you get drunk and your friend is no. Kyle hitler no. Oh <laughs> No, that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that's something like that. <laughs> yeah, at Midway where they fought the Japanese. Yeah. This well, is so after strange. a... I don't after know why you memory. stood up and went, Hi, Hitler, on the way to Midway. No. This is no. when no. you that's soaked, your, all by soaked your scrotum in the Evan Williams bourbon on the way there. Uh, well, all right, so dudes uh, like us out there that are wondering <laughs> what the hell we're talking about, Forget it. we decided we're going to go to the movie and we're going to save a couple bucks. We're going to pick up a bottle of booze and yeah. we'll just make our own bourbon. No, 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 in the middle no, of the no. Movie Paul will make them in the back seat <laughs> oh, for yeah. everyone while we're bouncing around the tollway. Well, you, it's not our fault. You, you couldn't handle the, the bottle and pour. So we had like these bottles of Coca Cola. So we went to the store. We bought a bottle of Jack Daniels or no, Evan it was, Williams. It was Evan Williams. Hundred proof. Under, we bought Evan Williams bottle and three bottle. one liter, not two liter, but one liter bottles of Coke. We this dumped. Was, this was high school. All over we again. dumped half the bottle of uh, Coke out. And we filled up equal portions of the bottle of Evan Williams, and we went into the movie theater, and got fifteen percent of it ended up on my crotch, which got absorbed into my very thin skin there. Just got so you know, blown. Oh, so you, so you know, so you were butt losing it. And it got a little bit more to. intoxicated I didn't mean than to, normal, but it got soaked into my skin. So we were we were blown the hell up the, for that movie midway. <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> I did. I fell asleep. And then he jumps up. And then I woke up. Fuck you. Yeah, I woke up going, <laughs> get him, yeah. And yeah, I fell back to sleep. That was ridiculous. But my point by bringing that up about falling asleep during the movie is that now that I got my sleep apnea machine, which, Jeff, you need to buy yours ASAP. Yep. Uh, now that you. I got my sleep apnea machine. Take it with you to the movie theater. No, no. My, my point is, is now that now that I have my sleep Never apnea machine, I don't fall asleep anymore. <laughs> Can you shut up? Uh, <laughs> get the full mask, Luke. On. I am your father. 
Oh boy. No, but it it life has taken a turn now that I have uh, I've done that sleep apnea, so I I can go to the movies. I just don't want to. I'm with Larry. I'm like I'm I'm not necessarily done done, but I don't really have a fantastic desire to go unless a new classic comes out. When right. is the next new classic going to come out? When is there going to be some sort of divine production of something really cool? Another masterpiece. When? I mean, I it's all fake no shit that's coming out, and it you know it all look. You know, it, there's nothing wholesome. You know, that's why I kind of lean to the back to these these Christmas events and all these these uh, childhood experiences that we have in our head of what was really cool back then. You know, just because well, we 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 actually talked about you know the John Hughes movies. Oh, they don't great. make movies like that anymore. No, they mm. don't. Right, the the wholesome coming of age, fun movies like Big with Tom Hanks and. Yeah, you know, and, and Home candles. Alone, and there's not enough special effects. The kids can't sit through movies like that. <laughs> Where's Bueller, the explosion? <laughs> Ferris Bueller's <laughs> Day Off. Oh yeah. yeah, classic stuff like that. Just kind of fun, healthy, you know, innocent. Yeah. So now they want me, this. Yeah. Pacific now they got Pacific Rim, where you've got these things coming out. I Look, and even though this was kind of a cool, stimulating movie, I mean, they got some cool shit going on there. You're like, oh, that's. But still, it's all special effects. There's no substance. And they no character development. He's, he's carrying a boat as a club. It's kind of like so the me, walrus penis we were talking about in the yes. last couple of episodes. Yeah. Let me tell you what I've been doing. So my youngest is 18, and he's the only one. He's, he's our last one, right? The other two have, have moved on and, and going to either college or graduated or whatever. So um, I've started this thing where we're watching old movies. Like he had never seen Terminator. He had never seen Terminator 2. Right. So, so you watched, got? Did you watch both of those? We watched both of those. He Ooh. loved them. Which one did he like better? Um, I I think probably Terminator Two, because it, it is a better movie. With the motorcycle, with the Harley. Oh, it's so good. With the Harley. It's he's so like good. flipping his shotgun with one hand. Yes, and, and he also they give a little more personality to Arnold Schwarzenegger in that movie. And the Guns and Roses song just playing. <laughs> right. Anyway, so then I I decide to move on to Aliens, Alien, Ooh. and Aliens. So Gorney th- Weaver. Yeah. Right, oh, and we yeah. watched we watched Great. Alien, and, and he fell asleep. He fell asleep during Alien. Not enough action, I tell you. Uh, it, it is a horror. It's more of a horror than it is a uh, an action. And it's kind of a cerebral horror at at uh, certain points. It is. It is. But Aliens will be much better. So he'll he'll watch that with us, and then we'll we'll see how that goes. But anyway, but I think it's I think it's kind of cool to go back and watch movies I haven't seen in a long, long time. Oh yeah, I love to watch uh, Turner classic movie. Channel, yeah, but you know, yeah. the old movies like from you know the forties and fifties. Sure, the the Casablanca. Yeah, yeah nice. that kind of genre. Yeah, I the Maltese Falcon. There's so many of those that I haven't seen. I, I would love to go back. Singing and watch in the those. rain. I, singing in the rain. Gene Kelly. Sure. I uh, North by Northwest. I had uh, I had that on, and the, he was gay. Rock the movie Hudson. The movie Jaws was yeah. on. Okay? Oh yeah. So I stop and I'm you know watching Jaws and the TV for a minute, and my daughter walks by. And she looks at the TV and she goes, what's this? I said, it's a movie called Jaws, and it was so great. It's intense. She goes, well, what's it about? It's about this town. They have a beach, and this shark comes along and attacks all these people. And she she's goes, like, oh, my God. She goes, they, uh, they made a movie about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, did, Boomer. Did Jacques Cousteau <laughs> take care of that? <laughs> they made a movie about that. <laughs> okay, Boomer. Actually, they've made a shit ton of jaws yeah they did it was oh, so they did. silly the first jaws was what 75 so good 76. yeah it yeah. came out at the same time star wars came out I remember and it, it jo- impacted people like oh, yeah. people, oh sure yeah. some people would never go back to the beach yeah ever. i have a problem swimming in the ocean to this day because so of is jaws a, is a too ma- bad is jaws a masterpiece or a classic a classic uh, uh it's not a mass I think it yeah. is because Actually, they never it... showed the fucking shark until the very end for the most part. Yeah, but it was it... all assumed because the the robot was a piece of shit. The animatronic yeah, it wouldn't work right. <laughs> yeah, so he never showed it except maybe a piece, a fin or something like that or an eyeball. So I right? guess that I guess that begs the question what defines a movie as a uh, as a masterpiece and or just as a classic, right? Which is one step below. Yeah. I'm making this up as I go along. You know, it's almost to me like it has to be described as larger than life. You know what yeah. I mean? I think it Jaws was. Grand. It has to be grand. It has to be epic. Epic. Yes. Yeah. I think Jaws was. Um, yeah. And especially 
the way it impacted so many lives, I think. Uh, so yeah. the, the terms classic and masterpiece are often used to describe works of art, literature, music, and other creative endeavors, but they are have slightly differences in their the connotations. Uh, classic typically refers to a work that has stood the test of time and remains highly regarded and influential in its field. Classics are often considered exemplary or rep representative of a particular genre, style, or era. They may not necessarily be universally acclaimed, but also recognized for their enduring significance. A masterpiece is a term used to describe a work of exceptional quality and craftsmanship. Well, Correct. thank you, Mr. Webster. I, I think a classic like Maltese Falcon, does that hold up to today's definition? Definition. Of I don't I don't know. Right? Can you sit down? And I go? would dare say that when it comes to movies, whether you classify it as a masterpiece or a classic, one of the things that's got to stick out is that, well, like you were saying, if it had some impact on our society somehow. Correct. And one of the more common impacts are the buzz phrases that come out of the movie. In Jaws, we're going to have to get a bigger boat. <laughs> right? Right. So that, yeah. That's kind of in our vernacular. <laughs> right. right. There's a lot of movies that have that. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. Well, let's, uh, let's spit out a few popular uh, Turner Classic movies that were on the list. Have you heard of Giant? Oh, yeah. Rock Hudson. Uh, James Dean was in James that. James Dean. Yeah. That was about oil. I have not Imitation seen that of Life. Oil. I've heard of that. His Girl Friday. I've heard of that. Bringing up baby. Yes. Oh yeah. wow. How about that was, uh, I haven't seen any of these. That was how about King Kong, the original oh, yeah. from the thirties. Like th it's a silent movie, I think, isn't it? From the thirties or the seventies. Uh, this one would be the thirties. Yeah. Fay Ray was the one he was oh, yeah. swinging around on top yeah, of. The and er, in Darrow. Although the, the the chick in the seventies was Jessica Lange. Oh yeah, yeah. very yeah. very hot. It I love the nice. way Super I hot. love the way those those meaty fingers came in and picked her up. <laughs> those big sausage legs. She was like, you know? she's like, ah, stop. <laughs> stop it! All my breast just popped out. <laughs> Wasn't she in Tootsie? <laughs> yes. Jessica Lange. Yeah, she was. She How about the Adventures of Robin Hood that came out in 1977? Yeah, with Errol Flynn. I'm sure. Not 77. That wasn't Errol Flynn, was it? Uh, Prince John Claude Rains. Claude Rains. Yeah, Errol Flynn was in that. In seventy seven. Robin of Loxley. I thought Errol Flynn was like forties. Did you actor. say seventy seven on that? Yeah, nineteen seventy seven. Errol Flynn was in that one? Oh no, no, no. He, yeah, his it was says, like in the thirties. Errol hold on, am I reading that right? Uh well, Errol Flynn uh, was like thirties or forties. Wasn't there another Robin Hood? I think uh uh Dancing with the Wolf guy was in that. Yeah, Kevin Costner was in it. That was early nineties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was that was not the one. I'm talking about the the earlier one. For this one is is, is way earlier. It had Errol Flynn, Claude Rains, Olivia, David Havilland. That's thirty seven. I bet that wasn't seventy seven. Wow. They would have been like no old. way. Yeah, they would have been dead. Yeah, it would have been the old <laughs> Robin Hood. Larry, you were so close. Dancing with the Wolf. <laughs> really? Is that what I said? Yes. Yeah. Just one. dancing with the Wolf. Not dances with wolves. <laughs> how about, Square dancing with how the about coyote. A space odyssey. Two thousand one. Yeah, a space odyssey. Uh, I saw that in the oh, theaters. So boring. That I was, saw that in the theaters. I, I couldn't wait to get out of the theater. It was epically it. boring. I was like nine when I saw it, and I was like, "This is terrible." You're terrible. It actually impacted my view of Star Wars because my dad wanted to go see Star Wars like a few months later. And you're like, no. And I was I like, Dad. So the last movie sucked, Dad. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Like this is going to be terrible, just Wasn't like that, that one, one we the just monolith? saw. Monolith. It was some giant monolith. The monolith. And, it and goes, I didn't get it. And it goes bum bum bum. No, yeah. that was bum, 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 Oh yes, bum, yeah, that was two thousand one. one. Yeah. yeah, I thought so. Hal nine thousand. And all the yeah. uh, the l monkeys and the cave little thingies were out there little banging the chest. Falls, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it. Hal, open the bomb bay door, please. And it said. Would I'm you sorry, like to Dave. Play a I'm game sorry, of Dave. Thermonuclear. I cannot war. do that. On the waterfront. That was what about a the, war movie. What about the King and I? With King Yule Brenner. Yule Brenner. <laughs> he was in a fantastic movie. What was the one where he's a machine? Westworld. That Westworld. That was so good. Yeah, that was badass. I watched it as a kid. That affected me big did time. Did you watch the TV show, the HBO version? Yeah, we did. We we got burned out on the it. First season finished. was fantastic. The rest of it was garbage. Yep, agreed. I absolutely agree. What else you got? Yeah. All right. Well, we got. Uh, how about Citizen Kane? 
I saw it. Never saw I it. saw that, it. That is supposed to be the critics say the best movie that has ever been made. Really, I remember when I was in college, I was taking a film class, and we dissected that movie until I vomited just about. Oh, that's and all of the just dissection of look at the angle of the camera oh, and the shadow on, on the wall and the phrasing of this and and this. I was just like. Do you think they they they, they they thought of all that when they when they did it? I think so. And it I was, think it some was of the stuff very really? innovative. The weird so that, the, angles that he yeah. used for the whole uh, concept of of just what they did back then was was so much different. They put so much thought into it. It wasn't slap a label on it and sell it. It it, it was about money, but it was also about quality back then. Art. The same way we made our cars back then. It was just it, they wanted the shit to last. Right. It had so, integrity. So, you know, the movie opens up with him dying on his bed w- asking for Rosebud. Oh, no point in watching it now. Thanks, right? Jeff. <laughs> and, 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 and it takes the entire movie <laughs> to understand what Rosebud is. Right. So that's basically what your movie is about is, is your Citizen wrapping Kane, it up. right? Citizen Kane, yeah. Well, now reporters assigned to a decipher newspaper. Uh, magnate Charles Foster Kane's Orson Welles dying words his investigation gradually reveals the fascinating portrait of a complex man who rose I was gonna say whore he he rose from obscurity to staggering heights uh, though Kane's friends and colleagues Je- Jedediah Leland well it's really difficult to say and it was Susan Alexander Dorothy common like we know who that is uh, shed fragments of lights on Kane's life. I guess so. Just like you said, they break down. It's they... supposed to be loosely based on the Hearst guy, the William Randolph Hearst. Yeah. Yes, the newspaper magnate. He has a castle. But Rosebud, <laughs> are you going to are you going to watch it? I don't want to ruin it for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I am going to watch <laughs> it. All right. Well, Rosebud is his childhood sled. It's the name of his sled. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought he said slut. Sled. Oh, so now there, there really is no point in watching it. So right. he goes, the, you know, he rises to the pinnacle of great wealth and uh, and big houses and all this, but as he's dying, all that he is thinking about is his childhood, his childhood, his childhood sled. Meaning, none of, nothing was, really matters. Not not right. it, it's all about the little things with. in life. Yeah. So did correct. his daughter? Did her get kidnapped? Patty Hearst, Patty yes. Hearst. In the 70s, yes. she was kidnapped by the uh, Simonese Elimination Army, or the SLA. And then she, like, and robbed a bank. forced right. to rob a bank. Well, or did, was she? That's the big question. Yeah, yeah, she collaborated with them. And then they called it some syndrome where you, 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 where you get roped in. Munchausen or something like that. She was acquitted. Yeah. 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 I thought it was her. That was a big deal. I thought that, 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 that no, name rang a bell. No, that's Munchausen by proxy. It's... What She's is that? What is, what is it where you uh, attach with your kidnapper? I know. That's what, what I was saying. It's some called? syndrome. It's uh, something, uh, Copenhagen. No, it's. Uh, something, something close to that. Oh. I, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. It's, uh, it is like Copenhagen syndrome. It's. Uh, uh, come on, Larry. You know this kind of stuff. People out there listening to the they know and they're screaming oh, right oh, yeah. now. Don't you know it's yeah. this? And the guy's saying it to his wife, these dudes are idiots. Yeah. Yes. Uh Munich. something syndrome. Come on. Come on, listener, call in and tell us. China syndrome. <laughs> anyway, the I don't China know. syndrome. Well yeah, look it up for us and later, you know, we'll put in captive captive syndrome. Full Metal Jacket, classic or masterpiece? Classic. I think it's classic. I think there are some masterpiece scenes in there. Stockholm. Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome. You said, did you say Copenhagen? I did. It was close. That's really close. I I knew it was a city in the Scandinavian area. No, 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 very nice. That's actually really, really close. (laughs) Somewhere up in that area. (laughs) Oslo Syndrome. (laughs) Oslo, Helsinki. I'm going to get there. (laughs) So I'll I'll tell you the the, uh, drill sergeant in that movie when my dad saw it, he goes, because he was in the military, he goes, that guy nailed the drill sergeant, just like what my dad went through. You say, oh, my God, a jelly donut. Paul, you missed the, the a jelly donut. He a said, jelly donut. He, he said, that's just how they were. Back in the day, that's how they uh, treated you. Are, so, you allowed to have pri- are you allowed to have jelly donuts in my barracks private pile? Sir, no, sir. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was, that was crazy. Stuff. Is that the one where he says there's only two things from Texas? Steers and queers. You got no horns on your head. You must be queer. <laughs> that guy, his name is Lee 
Ermey, Lee Ermey or something like that. Uh, he was actually hired as a technical advisor to help out with that movie. He was a drill sergeant. And this, yes, that in the and Marines. They wrote, and they roped yeah. him in. And he, as uh, uh, the uh, Stanley Kubrick was observing how he was trying to give instructions to who the actor that was supposed to be the drill sergeant. He was explaining, "This is how you got to do it." God damn it! <laughs> right. <laughs> and he, that guy ended up. Uh, so finally, he said, "Look, why don't you just take the part? You seem to have this he, down." And he, that's he, what he did. He was awesome. Oh, he's oh, he was great. He was great. Like I say, he downed it. My dad was like, he had flashbacks. He's like, that's what my drill sergeant was like. Private yeah. Paul, why do you want to be in my beloved core? <laughs> yeah. He was so empty, too. He had that, that helter-skelter look on his face. It's like. Who, Pyle? Uh, no, the, 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 oh, uh, the drill, drill sergeant. sergeant. He was like, just in right your face. In your face. And I wonder how many, I wonder how many drill sergeants are like that today, and if they are, how many of our youth can handle it well no they have cry rooms and safe rooms if they if, they, if their feelings hurt <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> i don't think they have cry rooms anywhere I do, I do know they have dumbed down some of the uh the the basic training uh programs to accommodate some uh people that for women can't, well women. for women, for women and for just thing. in general i mean overweight people yeah they've changed oh this guy's fat so we're gonna lower the standard you know come on Unbelievable. You know, i want the best soldier yes. to be in the best shape and i don't care if it's male or female the problem right. is, is there's Period. not enough people. So in order, it's to, happening. It's it's down. Yeah, that's what I mean. 60,000. So, so they so they's like, okay, we're our requirements down. are here. We're only getting this amount of people to join. If we come down here, we'll get our numbers where it should be. I mean, just, they ha- they're not on a good streak. The military you, is not on a good. streak. I think what you need to do is after say, what we le- when we left Afghanistan uh, and, the, and the recruiting. It's a lot ads, more than that. There, there's, it was awful. It all was of the it. the release. Uh, it was COVID when they released all those people. Yeah. Uh, because they refused to take it. They're they're just. They're, they're and then you have all these right. top brass that are being political. Oh, tons. Oh, yeah, I don't get it. Tons the of Pentagon, stuff that the dudes like us political? don't approve of no. all over the planet. I'll tell you, it's a jam-packed show. We've got a second half coming up uh, shortly. So we have uh, Dudes Like Us, um, a Facebook page. We have a Dudes Like Us Instagram. Uh, check us out on YouTube for Dudes Like Us podcast. And uh, hit the link. Smash that button. Follow us. Leave us a note. Tell you what you think. Uh, thank you, Mr. Producer, for the first half. Dudes Like Us, I'm Sean. I'm Paul. And I'm Jeff. Larry here. Larry. <laughs> Larry. Oh, Larry. All right.